everybody, and welcome back to the Triforce podcast today with me on the very last day of February. Where, where, Wait, where, um... is it the hundredth episode today? No. Oh my. Oh, okay. It's no, not... we got, it, got, it, got another couple okay. of months. Yet. We'll celebrate right, though, okay. Okay. Then when that one is out because okay. that deserves a big party. We'll get a cake. Have we not done a hundred episodes yet? No. Well, we'll have to have one candle because when it starts getting to a hundred candles, that is a fucking bonfire on a cake. Let's yeah, have so. um, like a big Roman candle. You know what I mean? Shoot it up into the air. It yeah. is weird that the the older and more frail the people get, the bigger, the more dangerous fire we take them on their birthday. You know? Yeah, it's, it's a true. sign of respect, though. Like because they've because it's uh, it's symbolic to their um, to their life flame that symbolic. burns so bright and <laughs> has life flame. and has burned yeah. so bright for so long um, if you looked inside their soul at their life flame it would be burning as bright as 100 candles that's oh, why. yeah and they're likely to fucking go up like a viking funeral pyre first of all Just... if they've made it to 100 lewis do you not think they've learned to avoid the perils of fire at this point <sighs> They've avoided all the shit that kills people normally. They fucking made it. I don't think it. that's how it works. I think really? that it's it's like a graph, right, where you, you, you get better and better at avoiding fire until you're about, I don't know, about dad age. And then you're like at peak avoiding fire age. And then as you start getting older, you start getting more reckless, falling off ladders, you know, accidentally setting fires too big, yeah. you know, plugging things in the wrong sockets. Do you know what I mean like you start like screwing out the wrong things, yeah, like maybe. sticking t- yeah. things in the wall? Most old people kind of look like uh, like Deadpool under the mask, though. Um, <laughs> so, it's like uh, maybe they <laughs> haven't <laughs> been so good at avoiding fire because most of them look like old, wrinkly maybe. Burns victims. Yeah, I, so. I have noticed that in my in my twenties, I was still I still felt the exact same as I did in my te- like late teens. There was very little difference. Thirties. I just looked slightly older than I did in my 20s, but I still felt pretty much the same. But once I got into my 40s, I started to notice that whilst the outer shell was was only withering very slightly compared to my 30s, the inner shell was really starting to, to suffer. Yeah. And I've noticed that there are now increasing number of things that are just very slightly beginning to break down. Like yeah. I can't eat a lot of cheese anymore. Right. <laughs> And that was one of my favorite things, was eating loads of cheese. And I now used I to can't sit down when I was a young man, get a knife and fork and just tuck into just that Just eat a load of, of cheese. Now cheese. I can't eat that cheese. Can't do I it. I used to be able to get through at least half a wheel of cheese on a single scissor. Yeah, but no now problems. I can barely manage a quarter. It's, it's really, it's quite upsetting for a big cheese fan. Can't yeah. eat brie anymore. Can't eat it. Yeah. Can't eat brie. Disagrees yeah. with me. And I'm starting to get, I know that in another 20 years, it'll, there'll be like a huge long list of shit I've got to remember. And uh, I think it's a damn shame. Everyone's got shit that they can't eat. That they, that, But I think some people just eat it anyway and don't associate it with the fact that it's making them fart or making them like have a sore, sore tummy. You know, people like, you know, I get, I get, a, sore, I get a sore belly every week and I also eat a, a fucking double cheese super pepperoni meat feast pizza on the, on the night every Friday. <laughs> it's kind of related though. You know, it can't it can't be a, like a true. people don't link the correlation. Well, nobody wants to accept that their favorite thing could be causing them a tremendous amount of uh, harm and pain, though. So, like, you know, that's why they'll look, they'll dig really deep and look for anything else that might be causing. Oh, was it a was it a waxing moon last Tuesday? <laughs> oh, oh, that must be why I had bad God heartburn. Goddamn moon! Uh, it's, it's the, the phase of the moon it always gets me. I don't know what's going on with my gut. Uh, was it was it because I was. Uh, putting putting kerosene on my life flame. Um, <laughs> I was dousing my life flame with so much kerosene. Of course, I had it to drink real it. Real heartburn. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it gives you. God Fuck it yeah. Out. yeah. So I I want to talk about streaming. I want to talk okay. about streaming. Okay. All because right. I, I I occasionally can we I do, do some... like a jingle and a, like as like a intro segment to it. Sure. Now we're going to talk about streaming. Talk about our daily job. Okay. All right. So go. this is this isn't about my stream, which is a whole nother thing. But I'm right. I was looking at the browse part of Twitch where you just go around and look. Sure. And I was clicking on various games and things, and you'll see something with like 8K viewers, and you click on it, and there's like one channel with seven and a half thousand viewers and a couple with like ten and twenty and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And I was watching this stream today, which seemed to be a stream where a streamer watches another person's stream, like a rerun of it and reacts to it. So you know the whole react thing that there's been for a long time now? Uh Now there's people live reacting to other people's streams, like reruns of their streams. Dude had seven and a half thousand viewers. I didn't understand 
what was happening. Like, why is this getting so many views? Why is this guy popular? Because I couldn't even see. He didn't say much. He'd be watching the stream silently, and then he'd just go, ah, ha, ha, woo, like that. <laughs> Occasionally, like, <laughs> no, he'd go, get, this is what react, I'm talking though. about, guys. Oh! And like, that was it. <laughs> yeah. And I thought you could achieve the same thing. You know, those little, <laughs> those little boxes where you push a button and it makes like an explosion <laughs> noise or a fart noise or, or like that weird laugh that Lewis was doing. You could yeah. get one of those and just have it sat next to someone else's stream, like a picture within picture. And someone just occasionally pushes a button on that box and it goes, Burp. <laughs> like that. And you'd get the same thing. Would it get 7K viewers? I think it would. Yeah, is that, I think it is would. that guy that had 7K viewers, is that his, like, is that all he streams all the time? Or was this just him, like, for 10 no minutes? I have no idea. The 10 I, minutes that you happened to watch him stream, I, I that's what he was doing. I couldn't tell who the streamer was. I, could, I, I, I no think idea. there should be, like, mass bannings on, on YouTube and Twitch. Like, like I, if you're, like, doing that, you should get banned. I don't think you should be allowed to, to, to steal someone else's content. I'm sure. I mean, he it. might, but he knows Bang. the guy. He knows Let's the tidy guy. up Twitch and YouTube. Honestly, like, okay, so I, I tell you what happened yesterday. Um, I got access. I got sent an email by YouTube, and it said, "Dear creator, uh, we at YouTube don't give a shit about anything as usual. Blah blah blah." Uh, but we've introduced a thing called the copyright match tool. Right. Frustrated by people re-uploading your content? Well, now, in 2019, you can simply click a thousand buttons and remove that one video. So I went in and I was like, hmm, I wonder if there's any matches on any of my videos. And it's like a hundred thousand videos. Right. Okay. Of Yogscast re-uploads. So it's like, you know, basic, most of them is like the songs and it's like people doing top ten Minecraft songs, and one of them has like 30 million views, okay? Man. And so it was like, would you like to submit a takedown request and give this channel a copyright strike? And I was like, fucking hell yeah, I would. And I was like, bam, bam, bam. And I did it to every YouTube video that had over 10,000 views, okay? Right. That was using our copyright stuff. And I fucking copyright strike, well, I hopefully copyright striked all of them. Right. right. Um, and I felt like an absolute asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but so many of them were like Russians or like bots or like Arabic or like just, just literally straight re-uploads, all the re-uploads with the quality worse. And I was like, there were a couple that were like slightly transformative and I left those like if, like, like a 10 hour remix or whatever. I don't know, or like a like sped up, like stuff like this. Like I left a few of them, but like most of the time, I, and I, it was, it was, it was, it felt like I was doing my bit to like clean up the shit that's out there. You're like the YouTube sheriff is what you're saying. And I yeah. hope that all of those channels get banned from copyright strikes. And I hope that they, all of their content gets deleted off the internet. Let's tidy up the internet. It's like a trash bat big, big. It's like not, no, it's not a trash can. It's the opposite. It's just trash lying around on the floor. And I'm putting it in a trash can and then burning that fucking trash can. Nice. That's what I would want to happen. Do you guys think, I, I listened to this debate the other day on TV. I think part of the problem with the internet and that one of its strengths, but it's also a big problem, is the fact that it's anonymous. Think about well, yeah. think about the difference it would make if the internet was not it anonymous. Is, that's always been the big problem. But yeah. think, just imagine it. If someone leaves a YouTube comment or says something horrible on Twitter, they, you actually know who it was. They actually have to step forward like a fucking adult and say what they mean and put their name to it. Not just Poop Feast but his, 370. But, his, but the problem yeah. we have at the moment, though, is that it's not that it's, it's, not that it's anonymous. It's just that we're not deleting like any of the 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 shit because it's like freedom of expression and freedom of speech is all tied tied to that. It's like we give a value to anyone's contribution, right? And fair enough, sometimes that's necessary to have like two sides of each argument. But if one side is just provably wrong, like on Wikipedia, there was a guy, a Wikipedian, who did like a bunch of um an AMA this week, which was really interesting. He looked exactly like you'd think a, a guy who'd done a million edits oh, I saw on Wikipedia. That guy. Yeah, yeah. He did an um, interview. Looked like, yeah. And he was really, he, he spoke in a way that used incredibly long words that I didn't understand in the manner that only someone who either is, I am very smart or actually are like a Wikipedian might use. Yeah. Um, but no, it was it was a good MA. He talked about it, but, but he talked about edit walls and how a lot of people like, 
um, will revert his changes when he's done them, and he's like, I don't care. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? He's, he's kind of over it. But I can see how that happens when you get two people with competing opinions, like, arguing. Like, on the same thing, same time with YouTube, like, yeah, shit, like, it's great to have all these anonymous fucking comments, but, like, some of them are just, just trash. Like, fucking delete help to get rid of this shit but that's the thing youtube and a lot of these places don't remove stuff like oh there was a big controversy this week which i don't really want to talk about because it really made me angry but um someone used your cup your special cup in the office <laughs> no somebody slept in your bed <laughs> it's, it's like how on on youtube there's like these people who are basically up. I, I was following this woman on, on I was, saw some retweets of this woman on Twitter and she basically films her kids and right. then monetizes them on YouTube and it, I get it right you've got kids you want to make them do, do, do you want to make them do work it's done since the dawn of time everyone you know back in the day used to have to have a lot of kids to get to work the farm okay uh, you're and, saying and, this, you know, this represents get the harvest okay an acceptable thing to do with children you couldn't have a lot of kids and getting them working on the farm it's having a lot of kids and filming them yeah. and putting that on youtube so other people can watch your kids and i don't know vicariously enjoy well, your kids i mean oh i know what your story is about this is a people getting banned because weirdos were making comments on the, the kid videos yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a two-sided thing though because yeah it sucks that these people are, are doing that in the first place but like who the fuck is watching this shit? Like, what? I'll Why tell you are you who? watching Little that? Little kids. Little kids. Get your That's fucking who kids it. off of that and get them outside doing some some decent shit and not watching living vicariously through some fucking make-believe world that some weird parent has created for their kid on YouTube. Like, that's So let me stupid. ask you a question then, Sips. You, you never let your kids watch YouTube? They watch, like, specific stuff on YouTube. I would not let them watch, like, some other kid doing shit on YouTube. Like, like opening My kids stuff watch, or, or watch like, a lot lifestyle of type stuff. Like, it's creepy and fucking weird. They fucking love it. <laughs> How is it different from a TV Cheese. show? That's what I don't understand. How is it different? Why is it different that it's someone has made this themselves rather than the BBC? Because there was a show that my kids used to watch on CBBC where it's a little kid and it's like a half hour show, a 20 minute show, and they follow them throughout their day. This, they're, they're, they always seem to be from Scotland. It might have been a Scottish show. This is my grandpa, Stefan. He works at the docks, loading fish into big boxes. Hello, grandpa. Oh, hello there, wee Georgie. Are you going to help me load the fish today? You know, that was pretty much it for half an hour. Yeah. Now, the kids are living vicariously through that little kid's life. They're meeting his parents, uh. seeing him at school with his mates and stuff. How is it different if you take that and just have someone make it themselves on YouTube. I don't see that well, much of a difference. Well, I think difference. here's the deal, right? Like, there's massive rules around getting kids and using them in making Holly in Hollywood and in and in TV shows yeah. and in and publishing. And the quality of it has to be a certain standard. And it has to it has to be checked that it's not creepy um, or or a, abusive. Um, and the, the problem is on YouTube is that there's there's people deliberately having another kid so that they can monetize it for the next five years. Right. And they also are like filming these kids and putting like these kids doing their oh they're like Timmy loves gymnastics Timmy goes to gymnastics and does the splits like 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 those videos are very dodgy yeah. read like creepy stuff on the on on the internet and cause huge problems and also these kids are going to have to grow up like and be 12 years old in school and they, they, I suppose they haven't had a say in it either right and they're, they're yeah. completely they're completely they don't have a say in any of yeah, it yeah. it's just I don't think any you know, you're not really posting parents' pictures of your kids on the internet, you know, only, regularly. Only on like, especially stuff, yeah, in it. embarrassing situations, you know. But I, I do think those are extreme examples, and I do hope I know, that YouTube I don't think they are extreme examples. Them. I think this is happening as a absolute plague on YouTube, on, on places where there's, it's unregulated, it's the, it's the wild west of the internet still. And, you know, YouTube used to have this attitude of, you can't have an account if you're 13, uh, or under, if you're under 13, and you can't, you shouldn't be. I don't think we should be. You should be even on there. But YouTube love it. They they actually it makes support it. But it's they all kids it. watching it. That's the thing. It's and little it's, kids. And watching I, I agree. It. I I get. There's a legitimate like big audience of creative kids who are making cool content. Like and uh, kids who want to watch it too. I understand who's, who's watching it and stuff. And I'm sure a lot of it is legit. But it is a breeding ground for 
massive problems. I agree, um, but I will, it, I will also really, say in really defense of it, me. some of the stuff, I've watched it with my kids, and it's little kids streaming and playing games, and they can relate to them because they're like, they say the same stuff that they hear at school. So my kids have picked up a whole bunch of catchphrases and stuff that they've got from these other kids that they watch. Now, I would rather that they were watching other kids than watching some fucking grown-up streaming, to be yeah, honest with they... you. I find it weirder that a little, a little kid connects with some dude in his 20s than it is with some a, a ten year old watching a ten year old play games. That to me is far more normal than having them watch someone who's three times their age and still trying to act like them. That's that's what really fucking weirds me out because I'm like <laughs> fucking swear you big puss. You're fucking thirty. You just fell off that cliff. Say fuck me. This is this game fucking sucks. But they can't, so they just go oh fiddlesticks. And I'm like <laughs> grow a pair of balls and start streaming for adults, mate. Leave the oh, kids streaming nuggets. to the kids. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, peaches! You know, it's it's literally that's, like that's, that. That's what I was told. Yeah. Oh, you had to say like oh, and then a food stuff like <laughs> oh, Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't isn't it oh, weird triple that, whopper. that we're we're weirded out by kids being on YouTube? But it's it's. I mean, uh, yes. This this is where the problem comes in. There are some fucking pedos out there that want to watch kids on the internet. But there there are always going to be kids. In the media for these fucking freaks to watch. How do you stop that unless you remove all children from all forms of media? I think it's impossible. You gotta yeah. just try and do your best to police it. Yes, there are some fucking weirdos out there, but Jesus Christ, we can't live our lives. We can't let our lives be ruled by the weirdos. I think there's other problems attached to it though. Like you see, like I don't know, just like just a picture of this kid, like who's who's like four years old and like wearing makeup and stuff and putting a dress on, and his mum's like. I'm supporting this, and I'm like, yeah, good, good for you for supporting and stuff. But like, you know, does this kid be like, can, can he really give consent at like that age to to have this stuff permanently on the internet now, yeah. like forever? I don't like it when know? it's the parents manipulating the kids. I fucking hate that. Like those or parents who prank the kids. their kids and all that kind of shit. Yeah, that's awful. But you're kind of manipulating your kids just by having them on there in the first place, right? Yeah, like, yeah. As it's much tricky. as they would want to do it or think that they want to do that. Exposing yourself out to the masses uh, like like that is uh, is something that you like need to think about before you do it, and yeah. uh, and you have to come equipped to be able to deal with, like you said, all these fucking people who leave shitty comments and anon uh, like the anonymous like people who are going to troll you on the internet and stuff like that. Like yeah, when you're an tricky. adult and and you've been around that for a while or whatever, you can pretty much cope with it, I guess. Like if you're if you're able to but like as a kid i think ban them just ban all ban them all ban everything like just let's get some bans out there let's tidy the internet up guys <laughs> oh my God. let's just ban all these people who are re-fucking uploading ban all the people who are reacting to shit ban all the, just just not even three strikes like just just look don't do it ban uh, okay. like if you want if you want if you like you're gone delete like everything they've done ever i don't care well no <laughs> one's gonna miss it there's so much fucking shit already they can make a new channel and start again and then get banned again right let's just fucking ban them I, no I, no strikes none of this shit <laughs> oh i made a mistake oh i didn't need to i might do it again they do it again like fucking just ban them get no we don't need them I mean, we don't, don't need, need to ban them though leave it Le leave it open let people do what they <laughs> they want the, the the thing is is if any of this stuff gets viewed in the first place it's the fucking idiots watching its fault for what caveat emptor is that the rule you're applying here i'm saying is if oh if, if it's bad so tough shit you shouldn't have bought it i mean you know just because you watched yeah. it mate no it shouldn't be yeah, there that's it. it shouldn't you be keep there watching it as well it's not like you accidentally watched it you're you're an avid repeat viewer of garbage and you're supporting it <laughs> and it's your fault but maybe sips if we take the garbage away they won't watch garbage they'll it'll watch something come good. back though it because it, it'll keep coming back because there's an appetite for it there's demand for it and people know it so it'll keep coming back just removing it's not the solution. But that's why we're not removing it. We're banning it. I and we're like watching it. crap as as much as the next guy. I like watching crappy TV and stuff. And I don't want to ban everything. But I think we need to need to get rid of exploitation and like stuff which breeds bad stuff. Like I think if you're monetizing your kids and that's like you, how your life is, then that changes the parents' dynamic with their kids, and it shouldn't be allowed. Um, it just shouldn't be allowed. I think anyway. I think you know what you were saying about the fact that if you did this. On TV, there are regulations, but it is weird that we don't have that. We basically allow YouTube to police themselves. It's like when you have a, an, an industry, like say the oil industry, and the regulation over the oil industry comes from 
the oil industry. You know what I mean? It's like if you were to just say to them, you guys just regulate yourselves. That's what people have done with YouTube, basically. You're right. They basically said to YouTube, you guys handle this because we don't know. But when it comes to TV, oh, that's very heavily regulated. Advertising is very heavily regulated. Oh, it is and TV. it isn't though, right? No, 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 like, dude, yeah, trust okay, me. Great, trust it's me. regulated. But there's still fucking advertising, fucking gambling and bingo and alcohol and everything on right, TV. You, you, know, you, like are, it, you, are, you are wrong because I'll tell you specifically that when I worked for gambling stuff, if you mention age... Like, if you say, hey, kids, let's gamble, that's a, that is like, eh, you are in massive trouble, huge fine, big, big problem. If you said yeah. that on YouTube, no fucking problem. Who's watching? Who's watching? And we've seen what happens when you have people saying, hey, kids, go onto this website and gamble. And it's only because these guys were huge that there was any comeuppance. And I'm not even sure it's changed much. But you I cannot mention has. gambling. You cannot mention winning. You cannot mention uh, anything positive in relation to it. And it has to be, it's very specific. The shows you can advertise on, it's very specific, the time and the channels. So for instance, I'm not going to be watching a YouTube video I mean, I'm not going to be watching CBBS or, or the ITV equivalent or any of those channels, and there's going to be a fucking advert for Betfair in the middle of it. That's not going to happen. But I could easily be watching a YouTube video, and there's a fucking advert for that on there. No problem, I assume, because who's regulating it? I'm not saying that there's no no that there's no regulations. I I realize that that it is regulated, but I'm still saying that like, you know, we 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 view TV uh, like ter terrestrial or, or digital TV with like with broadcasters and stuff as like safer than than YouTube just because it's been around longer but there's still lots of shit that goes on 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 TV that is 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 probably just as bad but we just don't You're probably right. We don't notice it as much because it's I, such I, a I personally I, I do disagree but I understand what you're saying. There is there is stuff on TV that's bad but it's it's it is far more heavily regulated than you than you it think. It is, yeah, but it's still like still the messages get through. They're just they're just a little bit more convoluted or 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 better disguised or whatever you know what i mean like on youtube yeah you could just be like hey kids come and gamble spend all your money yeah. on gambling kids like yeah there's no regulation for that but like i mean i i do think that if, if that if you see a tv show where that happens or there's something it's in the public eye the mps and stuff and and the papers will pick up on it but it, these, these kind of things like lewis was saying about it being the wild west a lot of stuff that happens on youtube only people who really follow that and are on the internet a lot hear these fucking stories. It all slips under the radar of the mainstream. And I think the weird thing is that that means that people just don't know. Oh, I don't know, man. I mean, the Daily Mail runs a, a column every day about like a kid who who plays Fortnite and has to be fed meatloaf um, through an IV by an his mom story. to keep him alive and stuff. I know, but they keep fucking running it all the <laughs> time. Do, anyway. they, it doesn't stop they, These guys will always run the same thing. Video games are bad and make people violent. How many yeah. fucking times have you seen that story crop up over the last... As long as video games have been around, it's always been violent video games, whoa, like this is what's causing these problems. And some fucking Yahoo in a position of authority will say, I think the problem with these games is these violent video games. And all these morons who have no idea what they're talking about come spilling out of the fucking woodwork, running their mouths and saying, yeah, it's those fucking violent video games, shut them down. And some then people go, we've got to do something. Something must be done. And they'll try and do something. Always fucking happens. But it, that's yeah. not because they know what they're talking about or it's a real issue. It's because it's exactly what I'm saying. They have no fucking idea. So as soon as it pops up above the radar, some guy does a mass shooting and says, I got my ideas from Fortnite. Even if he's full of shit, unless he built a special ramp very quickly up over the heads of his victims and then shot down at them from a great height with the goop gun or whatever. No, he didn't get it from Fortnite. He's fucking crazy. So I think <laughs> the, the idea that video games are to blame is, is so ridiculous, but you'll get pick, you, people will pick up on it because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You know, you know what's crazy? You've just, you solved a mystery. You just saw, <laughs> I've been investigating a murder for about two years now <laughs> that involved goop. <laughs> and we couldn't figure out how this guy got the jump on his victim. But he built a ramp. He built the ramp. Yeah, he, he built up. He, that's it. There you go. Hallelujah. A cold case, case of solved. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we got another case of the Fortnite killer, chief. <laughs> There's Dorito crumbs and Mountain Dew all over this place. Lukowski, I want you to find this bastard. <laughs> The mayor's gonna have my ass in a sling. The mayor always has their ass in a sling. First Every of all, time, yeah. the mayor needs oh. to fucking take a chill pill. They're trying their best. Also, what's it with the asses in, in these fucking TV shows? It's always asses and slings. Yeah. What does it mean? 
Yeah. Does it mean like he's going to kick his ass so hard he's going to have it in a sling like you would a broken arm? Or does it mean like something else? Like your ass has been bad so badly you have to have a, a fucking sling to support your ass. It's all... Oh, yeah. My butt got... I, the mayor hit it so hard I have to have a special uh, I mean, device that, on it at all times. That's what was so great about The Wire. Like, it broke all, like, the conventional norms as well, right? Because yeah. the, hey, the, cause Carchetti's ass is never in a in a sling. He was He can't having, put their ass in he, a sling. He actually relies he was on them, right? a, He was too busy having a piss fit. That That's how they would describe <laughs> it in The Wire. Hey, Chief, Mirror there's Sobre. no evidence. Mirror because sh- surely around the body there would have been loads of guns and, and ammo and just drops everywhere but it's all gone <laughs> the killer must have taken it with him <laughs> but he left behind he left behind some lesser weaponry oh fuck's sake <laughs> fucking but um but yeah I mean <laughs> oh, man <laughs> like my like I'm sure your kids are like this too Flax my son is like when I grow up I want to be a YouTuber. Oh my and, god, yeah. And you're my, just my like, eldest oh, in particular. Just don't. Yeah. You, you don't want to do that. Like my, mean, my eldest literally said to me the other day, like she's nearly 10. She said to me, when can I have my own YouTube channel? And I said, you have to be 18. I lied. I said, you have to be 18 to have a YouTube channel. She was like, oh, and that'll buy me a few years. And then she'll finally be old enough to, <laughs> to look it up, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, she's just like, oh, That's no. how easy it is. Yeah. She's so, like, my dad but I think a lot of parents, <laughs> a lot of parents want to do what their kids say, though, and they're like, "Let's make one now and do it together." And I and I, I get that. That's probably okay. Uh, she wants to that. do that. Is she wants it, us though? to record stuff. But I'm like, no, I'm not putting you on the internet. When you're old enough, maybe just about to deal emotionally with the horror of of being on the internet, then uh, then maybe. <laughs> Yeah, it is horrible. It's, uh, you it know is. what, actually, let, let, let me just reverse that. Because this last these last couple of weeks, since we did the episode where we asked people to send us pictures of where they listen to the podcast, I, I've had, and I'm sure you guys have seen the same thing, I had to set up a special channel on uh, on my tweet deck. Tweet deck, Just yeah. to see all the, the pictures, because I was losing them, because I've got my notifications up, and that's just like every like and all that shit. So it blurs out all the, the actual content, you know what I mean? So yeah. then I've got... One that's filtered by Triforce. We've had so much stuff, so much stuff. So I hundred, it must it's be great, hundreds and hundreds of pictures. Yeah, same I love where they those are. Pictures, yeah. It's amazing. People yeah. in, on the subway, buses, trains, and a lot of people in the middle of fucking nowhere, and a lot of people with some jobs. No offense to those people, but they look boring as fuck. And I'm glad that we <laughs> help you for 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> I don't know if we do. We just be really angry today. Man, some, of those jobs, some of those boring looking jobs look kind of interesting, though. Some the of them really time. do, actually. That's some true. dude was in a dairy cooler. I can yeah, relate to yeah. that. I used to work in one. Like some, what some guy was like listening to it in and amongst a bunch of like uh, shelves with boxes on them. It looked like maybe like an Amazon warehouse or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I think he was. Yeah, Kinda there's cool a whole bunch. And- a lot of people driving. Be safe, people. I, I, uh, I, I, the idea of commuting. I used to when I used to to get a lift sometimes to work. The person that would give me a lift had done this commute for like so long and so many years that she didn't even look at the road anymore. Like she was rolling a cigarette or she's on her phone. She's just she she's just got like this weird peripheral thing. She knows the traffic's going to be five miles an hour. She's just never looking at the road. I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. And I know it can get, it can seem just like the habit of getting up, getting up in the morning, walking downstairs and making a cup of tea. Just be careful. The roads are super dangerous, especially in America. Man. That's all. I just want people to be safe. Any, anytime somebody mentions the word commute, like, you know, you know, you get those words that just always make it's you a trigger remember word. one specific thing. Yeah, like a trigger word. Yeah. Anytime somebody says commute, I immediately picture Matt Dave, Damon and uh, what's his face, uh, Ben Affleck in Goodwill Hunting, you know, when he used to pick right. them up in the morning for their like construction yeah. <laughs> job or whatever, and their car was cold as fuck and they're smoking yeah, in yeah. the car and stuff. Every time, like every time I think of commuting, I, I picture that scene. Wow. It's, I don't know why. I don't even know why. I, I think of, um, I think it's from Pret. It might have been, it might be Pret and Manger, but I used to commute to Docklands from Twickenham and it took me about an hour and a half. And every morning... I'd get off the train and I'd go to this pret and I'd get one of these croissants to have cheese and a tomato in the middle, like a little slice of tomato. Yeah. And that was what I had for breakfast because I'd eat that on the on the walk. The last bit was like a 20 minute walk. Every single day for like a year, I did that. So whenever anyone says commute, I immediately think of the baked goods area of a pret. 
For, oh that, that's God. literally the that's thing that pops into my head. That's such a long commute too. Like, so oh, what's it that total miserable. two hours every no, day? No, no, three hours either way. Like it was an hour and a half oh each way. Oh my God. Yeah. Where did you so, work? Was it worth it? No, that was the Psychic Detective TV show that I did. I don't oh think anyone my. who yeah. commutes that far ever really thinks it's, when they, when they finally quit it, they're like, oh, I can't believe I did that. Yeah, no. it's one of those things where you but look sometimes back. Sometimes you just have to at the time. The only time I've ever commuted that far in my life is to go to school. Like, and like, I had to go yeah. to school, I guess. But like, well, I mean, I had yeah. to. It was a job. Once I, I, guess I, so, I took yeah. a job. I mean, that's the thing with TV jobs is you think this is going to lead to something. 99% of people that work in TV are going to work in it and never achieve anything and, and just keep grinding and keep thinking, this will be the one, this will be the one. You want to work in TV because it's exciting and you think that's where the money is and maybe I'll be able to get a cool job someday and you just keep hoping. Yeah. And sometimes it does happen. It does genuinely happen. There were people I worked with there who are now doing really cool things and are working for really cool companies. So you just need the experience and to, to do enough work, you'll meet enough people because it's you know so much nepotism and, and I know this guy and oh, I know a guy and it's like, it's like that that you'll do all these shitty jobs, but TV pays horribly. It's all super pyramidy. The people at the top make a fortune. Everybody else makes fuck all. The hours are unbelievable, and you will go through all kinds of miserable shit. It's horrible. Sure. Do not work sounds, in TV. Sounds like working at the Ogscast. So, <laughs> no, then, what did no, you, okay. no. So let's go back. Let's so, cut okay, that this bit. weekend, let's just cut this, that last, last weekend, I went to a wedding. I went to Martin oh, Littlewood's wedding. Oh, yeah, of course, wedding. yeah. How did that go? I mean, I didn't get an invite. Did you get an invite, Tyrion? <laughs> no, but I, no. I don't think, I think I've met Martin twice. Same, but still, I mean, I did. it would cost you nothing to just invite somebody. <laughs> that, like, <laughs> you know, you know they're not... probably not going to go. You might as well just invite them anyway. Like, <laughs> yeah, what a great mantra! But anyway, to have. sure. If that's how you end up with like these pet, your parents' house getting trashed. Yeah. Um, so when and it was actually super super nice to um, yeah. got had to get the old Southern Railways train, right? Um, which was always always was a it joy. A sleeper? Uh, it wasn't a sleeper. No, okay. there wasn't any like Scottish okay. announcer or anything. Thank right. God. Right. Just the regular old Southern Railways. Mm -hmm. Just just kind of crappy a little tap tap reference um, for last week Maybe. yeah they um that was weird so so i i, I just that, you know it was all lovely and uh, emotional and everyone's touching their life flames together Oof. and telling everyone about i don't know like i guess it's i i've been to quite a lot of weddings and the vows are very fixed and they're very standardized okay but i guess they came about before divorces right yeah because i know they did yeah because some of the vows are like they're just, I just like they're just grammatically wrong in a sense. Like they're like you know, and do you pledge to be forever until you die? And they're like yes. And then I was like, I was like in my head, I was like, except except if there's a divorce. And I'm sure Martin and I'm not gonna get divorced because they're a great couple. But and most people don't. But but a lot of people do. Do you know what I mean? Just like just to acknowledge, just so there wasn't such a cognitive dissonance in my head when that happened. Do you know what I mean? Like so so there's sometimes something someone says something to you and it just like makes you go like uh, uh, that's. It's kind of it just put me off, I guess, a little bit. So you want the vows knew... to be? Do you so and so take you so and so to be a couple for as long as you can both be asked with it, and then yeah. <laughs> if if the worst happens, let's just be civil about it and not be dicks. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. not try and stay together for the sake of it. Like you know, even though we made this promise, but we hate each other, and therefore we're going to ruin our kids and everything. Oh, yeah. it's, you know, it's been shown better off that if if the parents are hating each other. They should just get a divorce and not try and stay together for the kids, you know. But I think that some of the marriage vows and stuff are just a bit dated and like cat need to be need to be caught up because I think you're you're selling it wrong. You know, you, know? you can write your own, right? You don't have you can, to you accept can, yeah. the default. You can ones. write your own. I did my own. I think a lot of people are lazy though. I did my um, own. They didn't even learn. Them. I did my own. I I just cut straight to the point as well. I did. I, there was no. I just said, "Baby, this dick is yours and only yours." <laughs> I pledge. <laughs> I pledge my dick to you. <laughs> I'm not saying Martin and Nettie are, 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 are lazy. I'm saying it's more that they wanted to do it traditionally, I think. And that therefore they just, they, they, everything was very, everything is very traditional in the wedding sets. They have like the, 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 yeah. the, the cutting the cake and the first dance like they and all stuff. It, and it's all, fucking, it was all great. They call it a wedding breakfast. It ain't breakfast. It's fucking lunchtime and it's late at that. Don't call it wedding breakfast. Call it a late lunch. 
it's wedding a tra- late it's lunch. a traditional ceremony. It doesn't need to make sense. It just has to be nice and special. But, for it's, but, but where does married. this tradition come from? I'll tell you I mean, it's, it's, hundred, it's like 100 years, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's evolved a lot as well to fit with the multi-billion dollar industry behind it as well, right? So like, oh, there's a lot of, lot of fucking extras that get thrown into the mix so that they can, you know, just milk you for more money. Um, you know, you, you can't just get a dress now. You have to have like a fucking dress stand humidifier thing for the yeah, dress to the be. Yeah, all the bridesmaids ad- have to have a dress. All the, the grooms have to have a dress and a, a fucking suit, whatever. Yeah, and then you have to have like fucking little boxes with people's names on them with like one chocolate inside, which that's and, right. And we had shit. that. And there's a whole bunch of shit. Like it costs fucking thousands and thousands of dollars to have a I wedding. Lo- I love weddings. I do love weddings. But one time I would like the vows to be that they walk down the aisle together and the, the the vicar or whatever just nods at them and they just fucking high five and they peace. Yeah, That's yeah. it. Let's they go. Just get cut, on with they it. just get to the thing and they're just like, do, all right, do, do, yeah, do, do, let's do, do, do this. Do, do. And they just walk out. Yeah. And then they just <laughs> high five, the bam, Pokemon and let's go. Pokemon music starts playing and everybody cheers and then done. You're, you're out. Well, I, I, I like, there's a lot of things I like about it. Now, first of all, I like that it brings uh, everyone together, family and oh, friends for, yeah, for, for, for a meeting. Yeah. It's, it's it. a good excuse to get everyone together. And just see the family and, you know, just renew, like, the kind of ties that you have with your friends and family and say, look, you know, these are all the people in my life. Thank you for being in my life. And, like, you know, this is how much you mean to me. I don't know, like, it's good to have an excuse to have a social gathering these days where everyone's there and they dress up nice and they go to someone and have a nice meal. And it's all very friendly and loving and and really just wholesome. And it was was just, there were so many good things about it, right? Um, I, I, I didn't, I find it boring it wasn't like too slow or anything yeah. like l- sometimes i've been to weddings that just go on for fucking all day and you're waiting around you got like so a huge brought, smile on your face all day long and you're just thinking, i brought a this book is with the- me in case i needed you it didn't. um well you i've been didn't. to quite a few yeah. weddings what and are I've you been 12 sat years there. old Lewis just fucking that guy. put yeah. up with it if it's bit boring you just do what all grown-ups do and just <laughs> smile and think of something else that. He's what do you mean? Book. Like, just smile and think of something else? What, like, just stand there, Homer Simpson style, and listen to the music playing in my head? What, you don't have an I'm, imagination? You're telling me well, you, look, you can't just daydream about something else if you're super bored? I'm just sitting there, I'm just thinking of something else if I need to. Just go into your brain. I didn't need the book. Use it. In the end, but I took it with me just in case because I didn't know what to expect. That's such a kid thing to do. That's the kind of thing my ten year old asked, and I'd say, No, you can't take a book to the wedding. And you just just be bored like everyone else. Yes, exactly. exactly. It's their special day. You're there to be bored. Listen, we're here to embrace it. They're life flames touching. (laughs) Exactly. We're not going to read it. I can just imagine they gave you a front seat in the front row, and the wedding's going on. You just suddenly sneak a book out of your inside pocket, just having a peek. What would the book be? Like uh, Dragons of Autumn Twilight or something like that? Oh, well, it's actually uh, all quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> oh, nice. What a, what a fucking fantastic read. It's one of the most depressing yeah. fucking books We're of celebrating all time. a very happy day. Uh, excuse me, sir. Is that a copy of All Quiet on the... <laughs> get, get the fuck out of here with that depressing ass shit. We're, we're trying to have a nice time here. We're but never... I didn't need it, fortunately. Well, <laughs> I, I was a bit worried because uh, it's I didn't know a lot of people there. Right. Um, and so I was worried that I would be kind of stuck on my own, kind of without anyone you to know, talk you to. You know, the anything. best way to be stuck on your own, not talking to anyone. The, the best way to be stuck on your own is to go and sit in the corner and read a fucking book at a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's unbelievable. Well, I didn't need to. I just was concerned. Sometimes I get a bit. Um, like anxious in social situations. You're right. I shouldn't judge your social anxiety. It's, um, it's easy to be. Uh, yeah, I mean, because I think everybody gets the impression. Do not Lewis no, I, everybody gets the impression from oh, from Lewis and people on the internet that they're you know big confident people in all situations. Well, here's the thing. But it's different in real life. It's different in real life. So I haven't really talked about this, but like um, when we did the karaoke stream this Christmas, um, I was getting like really nervous about it, and I was starting to feel like I was getting like. A little bit of a quickened heartbeat, and also like like slight, slight shortness of breath. And I realised I was kind of having attraction a bit of to an me anxiety is what it was. attack oh, about anxiety. it. Okay. <laughs> that is the same feeling, actually. Yeah, when I get both, but I was having a bit of an anxiety attack, and so I like I had to take the evening off. And it's the first time I sort of. It's not the first time, like I guess it's happened to me in my life, but it's certainly the first time I noticed that that was probably what it was. Do you know what least, I think like, that was, though, is I know how hard you guys work, especially in the month leading up to the jam, 
And I think that there was probably a combination of having to perform, you know, people are gonna be watching, there's all these other people, you obviously don't sing karaoke very often. I, I spend the whole year singing to myself anyway. So when it's karaoke time, I'm just like, cool, now I get to sing and there's a microphone, that's it. So these are all songs I've been singing to myself all fucking year. Cause I literally, my kids do the same thing. Like anytime they're in the toilet, they're singing, they're in their room, they say, I sing all the fucking time. I don't know why, it's just a habit I've got. So for me, but I just turn up. There's no planning for me for the Jingle Jam. You've spent a whole month working on it. So of course you're stressed and in the back of your mind, you're, everything's got to work out and there's a lot of pressure and everything like that. So don't think that it's a it's a thing. It's just natural. It's natural. Well, yeah. I'm just trying to analyze it because that's the kind of person I am who kind sure. of can't stop thinking about something in circles until it yeah. consumes me and I just my life flame just sputters. And, <laughs> right. you know. Did you consult Reddit almost straight away to see <laughs> like if there was any I way? I didn't. That... I haven't really talked about R it. Slash, but I ask sort of... Reddit. Yeah. I should have done, maybe, because that's the good way to just get a load of uninformed assholes telling you bollocks. I was just about to do a karaoke live stream <laughs> in front of 50,000 people and my heart fluttered a bit. What could be the problem, Reddit? Well, what? it was more that, I don't know, like, I, I was trying to think about it and I've never really, I don't know, like, singing in front, in front of people in karaoke is a very extroverted thing to do. And I can usually do it with a couple of drinks and not have too many problems. It's a but. great summary of social interactions right there. <laughs> no, it is, though. I mean, most people rely on alcohol to socialize. It's, it's my a parents made me sing up on stage quite quite often. Like, my parents, for some reason, encouraged me to, to when I was a kid, to sing on stage. And they didn't, like, I don't think they ever, they, they ever, they ever really, like, forced me to do it. And they didn't film it and put it on the internet for money. Um, did, but, you know, did you guys have to do public speaking at school too? Like you had to, you had to research a topic or something and do like a speech on it. Did you guys have to? Never do that at really school? had to do that. I really? did. And never it, really... I did at university as well, and it was the worst thing. I, I used oh, to no, sweat. Oh no, that was always the worst. I would sweat. But, my heart would go. My palms would be sweaty. I stumbled yeah, over they, my words. They, I hated it. They did it to give you the experience doing it, right? Like, yeah, they, it didn't like, work. They know that you're going to be uncomfortable and sweaty and anxious and stuff like that. But it's well, it's no, but it was it. different. It was different. Like, like, like we've 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 gone up on stage before at places like uh, Insomnia and done these things, and I've I've usually like. You know, I'm usually always going to, before I go on stage anyway, even if it's to like, you know, a yeah. couple of hundred people, I'm going to be fucking super anxious, super nervous. Like even standing in the office and like someone says, oh, Lucy's got a few words to say. And suddenly, you know, like, like the poor best man, you know, at the wedding, you know, that's like a classic area where like the anxiety is like overwhelming for that, you know, like well, it's terrifying. Even though different it's different because you've had drinks by the time the speeches start to, right? Maybe. So and uh, sometimes I never, I don't feel a thing, but sometimes, you know, most times going up on stage, you know, even if it's to less people than a, you know, a routine live stream, you know, right. where I don't feel anything, any anxiety at all. Like, I think it is a matter of just getting used to it, but, but I don't know. I, I certainly couldn't get used to karaoke. Well, imagine what, how it feels like to be the spokesperson for like a company who's just announced that they've laid off everybody like right before Christmas or whatever. You know what I mean? Like imagine having to make that speech. That would fucking, fucking suck. Like at least. But I also to have to like fire people, even like one one on one. Like oh god, yeah, you that know, would be tough. Like, that's a horrible thing to do, isn't it? I'm I'd do it by I don't telegram. Like yeah, singing same. telegram. That's why right. that's why they have so many different <laughs> levels of management in companies. I'm though. sorry to inform you, sir, that you are no longer needed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's much the easier. The company's not doing as well as it used to. <laughs> and you are the least important person left. <laughs> Sign here, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Speak like I, I like. I remember at school I did public speaking and and I felt you know like uh, Eminem from Eight Mile, you know, with the sweaty palms, and yeah, the sweaty hoodie and stuff like that. But um, when you're a kid, you like you know that your your image and stuff really matters to you, right? Like the way that people like think about you and stuff is is like is much more important. But now, like. I don't feel like as nervous like in front of people or anything now that I'm a like an older guy with kids and stuff. I just think Do you think part of the difference is that in school you know that if you fuck up you're stuck with these people for the next 4 years. That's like, true. Too, you're going to have yeah. to put up with that shit every fucking yeah. day. You might sit next to that kid, the twat who's going to remind you every time <laughs> he sees you about something you said or did. That's school. Yeah. Whereas in your grown up people like fuck this guy. I never have to talk to him again. Who cares? And I, I, I mean, when I first started off, I'm sure you guys felt the same thing. Not so much streaming, because that always felt I could just turn it off. And yeah, if I said something stupid, that's fine. But I could just turn the stream off, whatever. 
and it was being in front of a group of people, like going onto a stage. There's something about stepping up, being on that platform. Everyone's looking at you, and you can see all of them, and they're expecting you to deliver something. And they can't yeah. just change a the channel. They're fucking stuck there too, which makes it even worse. If it's boring on Twitch, they'll just watch something else. But you don't. I mean, people generally feel a compulsion to stay where they are when you're on stage. You're like, well, looks like we're stuck here to see what this shit is all about. So you feel like you owe them something as well. I think it's either the, the, the level of failure is worse when you're on a stage. I used to hate it and now it, you just get used to it. But I think it, also, the idea of yeah. doing this 20 years ago to scare the shit out of me. Like, I, I also think it is like you said, like about like the audience. So, so, I mean, if it's, if it's your usual live stream audience, you almost certainly know that all of them know what they're getting right. themselves into. Yeah. Whereas like a live sort of thing, it's like, are these, especially if those people are don't even know who you are yeah. and the pressure is on and you're like okay well i guess we're just gonna go for this and you know they're gonna be reading their book in the audience because <laughs> they're bored <laughs> yeah i don't know all quiet on the western front though jesus well it's a pretty i've nearly done i got through a lot of it good, actually. good for great you book. you know good for good you for recommend you, it if you want to just feel fucking ruin someone's super, wedding that's that's great super yeah. depressed I, look i didn't i didn't need it it was great but you know I, i've been to enough weddings i know what it's like i've been to tons and honestly, I'm not a fan normally. Like, but but this this, this wedding turned me around a bit because they 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 streamlined a lot of the the boring shit. They'd obviously had someone who'd gone in and been to a lot and been like, yeah, these bits don't work. Like chucking the the bouquet and stuff over the shoulder, kind of um, like the stereotype stuff was not made a big deal out yeah. of, and all that. You know, all the all the cliches were kind of stripped down a little bit. But and that's yeah, another was, great thing fun. about having kids, though, because like you can get invited to like weddings and stuff and you always have an excuse for not going like i see you could you know like i, I haven't been well, to a wedding that's a kind years. of wholesome wholesome way to use your kids that yeah. doesn't feel massively exploited exactly. if, you're gonna, if you're gonna exploit your kids in any way use them to get out of stuff that you don't want to do like don't <laughs> fucking put them in front of a camera and create more stuff for you to do you gotta you gotta be smart about this you gotta like you gotta use cut their things powers out fairly. of your life yeah, yeah exactly Exactly. <laughs> I I, uh, I did some more cooking with the school this week, where I went in right. and, and cooked uh, with the kids. Meth. It was nice. it was fun. It was fun. We did cheesy scones. Oh. They they liked it. You did some more. So was this okay? So I'm, I'm wondering how many recipes you're gonna have because the pizza obviously w went down incredibly Big well. And, Big hit. And so what, wait, you went did... into a school and cooked food for children with, with, with children the, with them. Have yeah. you already done this? Yeah, yeah. Wait, you did it wait, before. But were you like in, in a in a like you know, like showing them how to cook it or were you just yeah, yeah. there to like so cook with every your week, kids? Every week they have the cooking right. and two parents will come in, volunteer to come in and you go and collect six kids at a time from the class, two groups of six, take them to the little school kitchen, cook with them, tell them what you're going to cook, you ask them questions. Now remember how much flour did we put in and they'll say, oh, 80 grams, you know, stuff like that. So oh you, you do the whole thing and then you cook it and then you take what you've cooked to the classroom and when the day is finished, they hand out whatever's been cooked to all the kids in the class, so they get a little, little treat on their way home from school. They love it. It's great fun. And, you, you know, you get to see all the, the, the kids that are in my, my youngest class. I, you know, she talks about them all the time. I get to hang out. I don't know some of them. I get to hang out and get to know the kids and everything. It's very sweet. You know, it's very, very, uh, very wholesome. Um, but you're right. We did cheesy pizza. This time we did cheesy scones, which are like scones, you know, they rise up and they're kind of cheesy. So I mean, because the teacher doesn't like us to make sweet stuff. She wants it to be like savory stuff because right. somehow that's better for them, even though it's just fucking flour and butter and cheese, but whatever. <laughs> so I'm going to come up with another, uh, yeah. going to come up with another recipe for next time. Cause I know, I know they're going to ask me to come back. Cause they call me chef Ted now. Like that, that's it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. Today, my kids, we're going to be making uh, double cheeseburgers with bacon. <laughs> oh. oh, man, the dream. <laughs> it's going to it's gonna get worse and worse. The, the, Today, kids, we're going to be making ice cream sundaes. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally, like, the, nice. the meat should still be bloody, kids. All right. I want to see blood in that bun. Nice, rare meat and nice, rich cheese on top. Oh, lovely, lovely. Today, kids, we're going to be making chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> chicken <laughs> twizzlers. A box of frozen twizzlers. chicken nuggets. And we're going to be cooking them in the oven. <laughs> It's funny. Some of the kids, though, obviously don't know. Like, they obviously haven't cooked much at home. And I think it's a shame. Like, some of the kids, you know, they've never done anything with a rolling pin at all. And you think, how can you, uh, you know, you gotta, you got to get them in the kitchen. That's super important. I feel important. like the only people using rolling pins are kids and, um, like, grands. 
you know, who bake for the local church bake sale. That's who, well, who else uses a rolling pin, honestly? Like, Chef Ted does. I mean, Chef Ted. Holy crap. Do you have like a penny and stuff? Do they, yeah, like, yeah. The kids do they call you Chef, like, um, like on TV? I, I, I was going to push it and say, kids, you have to chef? call me Chef. Yes, Chef. I don't want to have a yes, Chef, when I ask you to do something. Cut that butter up into chunks. Yes, Chef. I want that. Just don't respond until they call you <laughs> Chef, though. Like, they, Ted, Ted, Ted. You just ignore them and yeah. then... Uh, Chef, yes, Jimmy? yes. What can I? Can I? Can I'll give I him a real, you? a real Gordon, Gordon Ramsay style bollocking. I'll put, yeah. put, a, put a, a, a piece of bread either side of their head. What are you, an idiot sandwich? You know, right back to class. Did you get anyone get any injuries? Did anyone get any burns? No, like, no, no. We're, we're very careful with all that. So like the oven is out of bound. The, it's butter knives. Okay. I mean, it's butter knives, and they, they generally do the mix in and the roll in and the. All that kind of stuff, you know, whatever it is. Generally, dough based. Because I based genuinely system. can't do any cooking without cutting myself or injuring myself. It's just somehow, practice. Or I used to cut myself slightly. a lot. It's just practice. Are you guys good at slicing up stuff like oh, uh, real man. quick? I'm so good at cutting onions. You wouldn't believe it. Really? So so Dice, good at cutting them? onions. Slice them? Diced onions. Dyson? Super wow. diced onions. And I'm like, tuk, 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 like wow. that. Wow. Like I, I I'm cook not every at day. That point. Oh, you'll yeah. get there. It's just, but I, yeah, like Lewis said, I used to cut my fingers. I'd be like, ah! And Mrs. F would be like, what happened? And there'd be like a huge gouge in my hand. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, once you've done that a few times, you just get your technique down. You've got to sort of hold it like a claw hand, and the knife should be very slightly angled away from your finger. But you can use your nail as a kind of the point to bounce the knife off, so, so you know exactly where the sharp edge is. There's all kinds of techniques. And chopping carrots, I love it. I actually enjoy that part most because I get to think I'm a real chef. Chef Ted. I feel like a lot of this shit could be replaced by machines now. Yeah, but then you've got to clean the machine. That's the problem. Washing the machine is more of a pain in the ass than doing it yourself and then just, you know, acquiring a skill. I don't know. I don't know. Like, maybe you're right. Also, carrots. Fucking hate carrots. What? Jesus Christ. What? They suck. They are the oh fucking God. worst vegetable. What is wrong with this guy? What are I you know. talking about? What man? is wrong carrots with me? Carrots are super good. That's, they're not. They're, they're, they're crap. It's a they bombshell suck. revelation. Worst vegetable. The worst vegetable. Worst, worst vegetable, I, I, I think that the worst vegetable has got to be either leeks. Leeks are pretty fucking gross. <laughs> or um, I, I don't like fucking, um, I don't like courgettes either. Like, I find them kind of gross too. I, I like yeah, courgettes I when they've been it. fried enough. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't like them I that kind of don't. limp. They have, like, I don't mind it if they're like sliced up small and like put into like a pasta sauce or something like that. Then they're fine. But That's just not like, how I like them at all. Just like, like when, a, when like they're a, mushy. Ugh. Ugh, Best God. vegetables are obviously like sweet corn is up there. That's a good one. Oh, only on a, a cob. It's got to be on a cob. Otherwise, I'm not touching it. If it's, if it's been yeah. decobbed, it's No, it's, it's got to be on corn no, no, on the I cob. I don't mind corn, Great. cob, oh, but corn decobbed, off the cob is, is still on the top no, like, it's 10 a, it's list. The it's the good. Devil. And then peas are great. Love a pea. Always love peas. Love a pea. Can't complain. Mushy peas, like, they're down the list again. Don't Oh, that's don't Mrs. F's favorite. I think butternut squash is pretty gross, too. It just doesn't taste like anything. Are you butternut kidding me? Squash. That's like a top, top vegetable. It's oh, a good I vegetable. I think sweet potato, like, I would have rather eat All right, let me let me hit you with a few. Let me hit you with a few. Artichoke. No, thanks. Sure. Uh, amazing. They're amazing, right? Asparagus. Oh, f- fantastic. Love uh, asparagus, but not too much. Yeah. Because I'm sick of making my piece smell bad. All right, this yeah. one might be a divider here. Brussels sprouts. Uh, yeah. I can, I, can, I can take them. A couple. I like them. Couple. I like them. A couple. With, with, with gravy. Couple. There's got to be gravy in there. Yeah, you, have you can't to have, have yeah, right. You, yeah. Can't you have, have to unhealthy the Brussels sprouts yeah. by putting them and cooking them in them honey in or something. Right. Cabbage. No. Really? Yeah, I can take I can take a bit <laughs> oh, of cabbage. Oh man, I love cabbage. I can I can't I can I can take kimchi, but I can't take oh, I cabbage. Right, cabbage. So cauliflower, can... specifically cauliflower cheese. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, fuck yeah. Or yeah. like cauliflower yeah. that's like curried curry by sauce the, cauliflower. By the truck yeah, yeah, yeah. Cauliflower not too, is not too nice. soft and like yeah. mushy. Oh man, yeah. just right. All right, yeah. uh, fennel. Fennel, no, it's just it's, it's awful. Not a fan of fennel, really. Why would why would you have that? It just yeah. tastes so like weird. Onion, don't like it. Onion, yeah. Number one it's vegetable. Numero it's so good. It's the most versatile. I use, I use onions every day. Fucking love onions. Yeah. Yeah. onions. Yeah. Honestly, if I, I, if I could, I would I would put the word onion in my middle name. Yeah. I, w- I want it in there just as a tribute because I fucking love onions. I think they're amazing. Onions are great. Uh, Ted Onion for size. Yeah. I want yeah. I want to be like, known as like onion. Spring man. onions are great. Like crispy onions on top of stuff. Yeah. Oh, onion rings. And I the, mean, the so onions' much. little brother, the shallot, also deserves a shout out. And they're yeah, even younger, like, possibly not related brother, garlic. I love all three. 
Love all Garlic's that. What fantastic. about broccoli? Broccoli's pretty good. I like broccoli. Broccoli's I can't pretty eat good. Broccoli. Can't green eat broccoli. beans, really? really nice. I like peas. green beans. Peas Love are peas. good. But what about what about the freakish the freakish half cousin the freakish half cousin of the onion the spring onion? Well, it's it's, it's fine. I yeah, mean, I, they're I, good. I can take a spring. Onion. You can't yeah, eat them fan. raw. Like you can't chow down no, on them. What about beetroot? Mm. No, I hate beetroot. Oh, oh my god, beetroot so is nice. actually fucking awful. I mean, I can eat it like if it's vin vinegared, like in those jars. Oh or whatever. Yeah. my god, well, like in a salad or something. Like oh, you have to god. have it with stuff. But all right, here's a weird one. Here's a weird one. Radish. Swede. No, like radish sweet. is a no-go for me. Radish is radish. amazing. I love radish. But, They're good. But what They're about peppery. Swede? Mashed They're Swede. Good. You ever had mashed Swede? Swede is, is rutabaga. Yeah, it's awful. It's amazing. It's like, a, it's What's like wrong nearly as bad as turnip. Yeah, that's a, with, a, yeah. with a lot of root vegetables, you really got to spice them up, like, or they're just so like parsnips. fucking boring. Oh, yeah. Fucking oh, God. Excuse me? Yeah, turnips, parsnips. parsnips. They just have this awful taste. Yeah, yeah they, they taste really like parsnips. Gross. They taste amazing. You got you to gotta butter them up, like, to death and stuff. You guys like, are crazy. You got to, like, have them, like, deep fried and dripping in, no, like, maple syrup in order to even be vaguely edible. And at that point, you're just eating a deep fried stick of sugar. Oh, you're crazy. Okra. Oh, yeah, I, I will eat yeah, okra, sure. but I think, I think it makes me like get heartburn. Okay. Does right. that what broccoli does to you? No, it gives me the it gives me the shits. Okay. Whoa, no, broccoli okay. actually like loosens For up real. your. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Coffee. God, that's crazy. Broccoli and rich cheese. Those are the three what about, things. What about celery? Celery's fucking weird, isn't it? I don't like, mind celery. I, I like, I put it in my bolognese, like as part of the sofrito, like onions, yeah, yeah, carrots, yeah. celery, mix it all up. Real fine. Like, I don't, like, a, you don't want any stringy bits, It's got, but it's got to be in there. We used to have a snack as a kid called ants on a log, which was uh, <laughs> celery cut into like a, like a small sort of like chunk of celery. And then inside like the groove bit, you'd spread some like cheese whiz. You oh, know, wow. like uh, spreadable <laughs> cheese. And then you put little raisins on it. And <laughs> oh it God, sounds, sounds fucking awful. gross, but man, it was so good. Like you got like a you got a bit of cheese, you got a bit of Ants celery. On a log. Ants on yeah, a log. That got... is an amazing name for a snack. Celery yeah, yeah. with cheese Ants whiz and raisins. That sounds awful. It, sounds it does. Terrible. It sounds fucking terrible, but it's pretty good. Trust me. Ants like, on a uh, log. Nice. I love that. Yeah. Okay, that's homework for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. If you can, I used to put peanut butter can... in the groove. That's really good as well. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna yeah. try I'm gonna get some fucking cheese whiz in there, yeah. Don't do it, kids. Yeah. Ants on a log. I would rather eat actual ants. Oh, no, 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 no. Than like that. with like with some raisins, because you get like a bit of sweet. Like the raisins and the celery go really well together, and then you got the cheese to just like <laughs> like so to tone down the sweetness. <laughs> oh, it's fucking really good, actually. It's nice. I think sometimes kids like want to want to eat that. You should do that for cooking at school. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can dance on a log at school next time. No, so thanks. That will go down great. Um, oh man! Holy shit! Um, yeah, I mean, you're right about taking a shit. Like, I had a coffee about an hour ago, and I right. really need a shit now. It goes so. right through your shit out of bad. his ass. Yeah. It yeah. does. It's de it definitely, like, triggers it. Like, if I need to, if I'm like, okay, I need to go in an hour's time. Let's have a coffee now. And then I, I can, like, time it perfectly. I don't have that really, like, like, instantly gives me the shit. Like, so what are you saying? So you eat broccoli, and then you know, like, within no, an I hour No, I get, like, so. um, I get really bad stomach cramps so like, like, like it's the same yes, with the cheese it's of. like agony it's like actual right. agony it's like someone's stabbing me in the stomach and then i have a, a unpleasant bowel movement i'm sorry for these details folks do you get it with like kale and all the other stuff as well though? i, I haven't very tried because i avoid kale as if it was well, poison have you have you tried pooping into a like a box and examining it like just to make <laughs> no, sure that your stools are healthy and stuff i haven't like, but you're right that sounds like such there a fantastic was that show idea. on channel four a couple of years ago where they did that remember they'd be like this man and it's nothing but cheddar cheese and cheese and onion crisps. And now Let's we're going to poop. make him shit in a box and we're going <laughs> to look at his poop. See <laughs> just how unhealthy this man is. Yep, we can see from this man's poop that all he eats is cheddar cheese and cheese Haven't and onion crisps. Haven't done it. Haven't done it. But yeah, no. it's a possibility. His life flame is really fucking in <laughs> trouble. It's, it's dim. <laughs> it's basically a big shit. <laughs> it's very, very dim. It wouldn't even light up a small room at this point. This man needs <laughs> to start eating some better shit. He's going to eat some oh, right. parsnips. We're done. <laughs> Lads, so, I, I think we've covered some important topics today. That was some good yeah, chat. We, like, that was more did. chat chat than, than yeah, locks. It was, it was a good one. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. <sighs> Man, I don't I'm know. I got go... a bit angry at the start. That's fine, about Lewis. It's all right. YouTube. Sorry, I got angry. It's a safe place to do that. You know what I mean, Lewis? It's, mm. Let it out. That's what this is for. I let some stuff out today. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm better for having got it now off my chest. Now go have your poop. All right, I will. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.